in the studio talking with Christine Jacobs, who is with the Physical Therapy uh, Rehab Center, and we're going to find out what goes on over there. Tell us about it, Christine. Good morning, and thank you for having me. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what to expect um, for your outpatient physical therapy evaluation, okay. and I should probably clarify that I am specifically talking about outpatient. Uh, the inpatient rehab team works a little differently in terms okay. of how they um, they do their evaluations. Oh, okay. okay. Okay, so the first step when you're preparing for an evaluation is, of course, we need a referral. Uh, we can't see you without a referral or otherwise known as a prescription mm -hmm. um, before we do the evaluation. So okay. most of the time the referrals are, are obtained through your medical doctor, mm -hmm. um, but they all ca also can be written by a nurse or a physician assistant or even a chiropractor. Okay, why would someone need an evaluation? How does that come about? So often there's some type of complaint about either a mobility issue or often a pain issue. Um, sometimes there's a fall, so mm -hmm. uh, a doctor might recommend some therapy to determine whether or not your balance is an issue in okay. contributing to a fall. Okay. So those are the most common issues. There's others as well, obviously after surgery. Um, doctors will often want you to have some rehab to strengthen your muscles and, and get you a little bit more mobile and get you back to your, to your prior level function. Okay. So that would be the first step is getting a referral. Um, and if the referral is obtained by somebody here at the medical center mm -hmm. at Greenspring, then the, the work is a little easier for the resident because the referral will be faxed directly to our office. And once our office receives it, we will give the resident a call to set up the appointment. Okay. Um, if, you, if the resident gets a referral from an outside doctor, then the resident would just need to contact us directly oh, okay. and set up the appointment. So okay. that's how that would work. Um, and so the, our um, receptionist will go ahead and schedule um, one, one appointment for the evaluation. Okay. Um, and that's when the therapist will assess the patient and figure out the frequency for, for therapy, whether it's twice a week or three times a week, for example. Okay. Um, it's important that I mention that uh, referrals are only good for 30 days. So once you have the refer referral written, it's important that you're seen within that 30-day period okay. or the prescription is considered out of date and we would need a, a new one from the doctor. Okay. Um, so once you're there, um, expect to be there for about an hour and a half or so. That's about the duration of the evaluation, plus a few minutes, um, give or take, for some scheduling at the end of the session. Mm -hmm. um, the first portion of the evaluation is typically a lot of talking. So the therapist will ask you some questions about your background, why you're here for therapy, what your main concerns are, um, and you know, talk to you about your medical history and any factors that could affect your therapy and what types of treatments are appropriate. Okay. And then the second part is an objective um, portion, which is basically where we collect some data um, in terms of taking some measurements, doing some testing, um, measuring your strength and watching you move around um, so that we can figure out what your baseline is and what type of problems you're having. Okay. And then we'll kind of take all those pieces and put them together and then kind of figure out a plan of care, meaning uh, what type of treatments that we're going to recommend, what type of frequency we would suggest you coming to therapy for, and oftentimes at the end of the evaluation, if there is some time left, we would start some treatment on that day mm -hmm. and provide a home exercise program. Okay, okay. Now what, when you're doing this evaluation of strength, um, what kinds of things do you do? Um, we typically do what's called a manual muscle test. So we will ask you to move your limbs um, in different motions and for each motion test the strength that you have um, to kind of give us a sense of what particular muscles are, are weak and strong. So there's um, specific testing that we can do for that. It's, it's kind of a rough test, but it gives us an idea of how weak you are and what muscles in particular are weak. Mm -hmm. And that way we can kind of understand what exercises are most appropriate to treat the problem you're having. Okay. Um, but in addition to that, like I mentioned, there are some functional tests. So um, perhaps we might do a balance test where we can um, you know, determine what your fall risk is, if that's an issue. Um, 
or if your main complaint is pain, then we might have you fill out a questionnaire that asks you specific questions about your pain, and it can give us a, a numerical value to kind of give us a sense of um, how much trouble you're having doing specific things. I know I went in with a, a big knot in my shoulder, and uh, they always started me with a heat treatment. And, oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's always the most <laughs> popular. <laughs> we reel you in with the good stuff, yes. yes. I mean, that's, that's certainly a common form of treatment we would yes. do for pain. Um, but that's why the evaluation is so important is mm -hmm. sometimes people have medical issues that certain treatments are not safe for. So mm -hmm. we'll sit down and talk to you about, you know, have you had a history of this or that, this type of surgery, certain things that we would want to avoid um, particular treatments. Mm -hmm. So um, I always suggest if it's possible um, to take a little bit of time before you come in for your evaluation and perhaps jot down um, you know, a couple of important notes about your medical history mm -hmm. because it is hard to remember all your details sure. when you're sitting down with yes. someone. Yes. Um, so if you have certain you know, procedures done or surgeries done or certain medical um, conditions, just to have a short list that you could provide to the therapist. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, if you forget something, you know, it's all written there. Right. Um, that's really helpful for the therapist to have mm -hmm. just a, a little information written down to, to refer to. to. Possibly give a clue as to what the, what caused the problem. Absolutely, it's, especially yeah. if there's a particular episode that you're here for. For mm -hmm. example, if you're here because you injured your back, it's good to have a little specific history about when did that injury happen, mm -hmm. what occurred, um, what types of things are triggering the pain, etc. Mm -hmm. Whatever information you can provide to us gives us a little more guidance mm -hmm. as to what type of treatment is going to be most beneficial for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in physical therapy, how does that differ from occupational therapy? That's a good question. We get that question <laughs> quite often. Um, so occupational therapists typically focus on activities of daily living, so um, tasks like dressing, bathing, feeding, grooming, toileting, those are your basic day-to-day -day tasks. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they work a lot with functional activities like that. They also primarily work with the upper extremities, um, so you know, upper body type of strengthening and range of motion issues. Uh, physical therapists work primarily with mobility tasks, so if you have a balance or a walking problem, or if you're having um, often just chronic pain or acute pain, if you just need some strengthening, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we're more focusing on mobility type of issues. Okay. Um, but sometimes there's some gray area too. Sometimes people will come in because they've had a shoulder issue or a shoulder problem that could be either an occupational therapy related um, issue or physical therapy. So um, again, that's why an evaluation is so vital because we can, as a therapist, figure out what your main concerns or limitations are mm -hmm. and figure out what the best type of therapy is for you. If it's not ours, then we can refer you to an, um, an occupational therapist. Okay. Now we're talking about the outpatient. Correct, correct. Now, the outpatient therapy and the inpatient therapy, uh, where is the inpatient therapy? The inpatient therapy is located in Garden Ridge okay. on the second floor. Um, we are all one department, so we're all one team. Okay. Um, but as far as how we um, handle evaluations and treatments, it's a little differently uh, different in that outpatient, we have a specific schedule. Mm -hmm. um, we schedule patients at a particular time and they're expected to come at that time and that's when we um, w when we do the appointments, whereas an inpatient, um, you know, there's a little bit more flexibility there. Okay. Um, so the therapist will typically, for the evaluation, see that person in their room, um, and then the treatments are not always scheduled at a particular time. Sometimes they're kind of up to what works best for the the resident and the therapist, and also the schedule of nursing and meals okay. and things like that. So okay, so a person who needs outpatient therapy would not go to Garden Ridge at all. Correct, correct. The outpatient therapy is in um, the Hunters Crossing building in the basement. Okay, um, down by the. Uh, uh, yeah. 
done by the conference, conference center. center. <laughs> yes. Now we do also an outpatient therapy that's also um, encompasses assisted living. So the assisted living residents are considered um, under the umbrella of outpatient oh, th really? therapy. So, so they come over here. Then. Well, actually, so yes. Uh, thank you for uh, for clarifying. So the um, the assisted living residents will be seen in their in their unit. So oh, they okay. will actually be treated over in Garden Ridge. Garden Ridge. Um, that would be the the main exception. All of the independent living residents will be treated in in um, the outpatient rehab center over in Hunters Crossing. Okay. But the assisted living residents will either be treated inside their unit or in what we consider the outpatient satellite office, which oh, is also okay. in Garden Ridge, just to make it more simpler or simpler since uh -huh. that's where they all reside. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know physical therapy is a uh, quite a science. I had a friend who was a physical therapist and I kind of helped her through all of her exams oh, yes. and you know knowing all the bones and all of the mu muscles and how they work and why they work this way and that way and Absolutely it's, so. it's it is very science based and it's uh the, the classes and, and everything is, is very similar to a, a medical program in terms of right. you know what type of background you have to have anatomy wise and biomechanics and everything. Right, right. Yeah. And I really appreciate all of you because I know you work hard at it and you do marvelous work. Oh, thank you. So thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Okay, let's have a little, um, a little interesting film here on Jingle Bell Rocks. Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell Rock. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring. Snowing and blowing up bushels of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air. What a bright time, it's the right time to rock the night away. Jingle bell time is a swell time to go gliding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle all around the clock. A mix and a mingle in the jingle and feet. That's the jingle bell rock. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bell swing and jingle bell ring. Slowing and blowing up bushels of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. In the frosty air. On a bright time, it's the right time to rock the night away. A jingle bell time is a swell time to go gliding in a one horse sleigh. Giddy up, jingle horse, pick up your feet. Jingle around the clock. Mix and a mingle in the jungle and feet. That's the jingle bell. That's the jingle bell. the studio now with Juanita Kuntz and Debbie Enright and they're going to talk about the seven dimensions of wellness. Let's find out what they are. Sure. Well, you know, it is the holiday, so we were all, everybody's all about their pie, right? <laughs> so in the fitness center, we are all about the pie, all right, but we want you to make a pie and put in the seven dimensions of wellness. So for you to be really, truly well, there are dimensions that you need. And so we have a little sign here that Debbie made. It talks about not only your physical, but physical, emotional, uh, spiritual, social, environmental, and vocational. So okay. with those seven components, if we were to work on those, um, and we have, uh, you work on those and you 
come to the fitness center, hanging on the outside of the bulletin board is a little pie. And you fill that out with things that you are doing. So if we were to say physical, oh, three times a week, I work out here in the fitness center. So that week you could say, put on your little pie, worked out three times this week. Intellectual, oh, I play cards, bridge, two times a week with my friends. And then emotional would be, I've, I'm, you know, I am very optimistic about the season. I'm going to see my family. That makes me happy. So that could be under your emotional. And then social would be, oh, a family get together this week. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be with family. So that's such an easy piece of your pie yes. to put down. And then the spiritual, I'm going to chapel. You know, a Christmas Eve service. So, or I, I do Bible study with my church or my, my group of women on my floor. And of course, environmental would be, are we, you know, all those yummy uh, pies that we're having, how about those tins? Are we recycling those tins? Are we, um, also part of this emotional environmental is, is you and me, am I making a positive impact on the people around me, on this work environment, or in my floor environment, or at my table at dinner? Is it positive or is it a negative? Mm -hmm. So we want to we want to be a positive influence, of course, particularly during this season when a lot of us have lost our loved ones. I know my mom and dad are gone, and my mom has been gone for gosh since I was 28. Mm -hmm. So you know, it makes me think about my mother, That's and right. instead of being sad, family times, yeah. family times, special mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. So. We, you know, what we want to do is focus on what we're grateful for mm -hmm. instead of what we're missing, you know. I think anybody, uh, regardless of, of what's happened to them, if they think long enough, they'll find at least one thing to yes. be happy about. You know, and research shows that if you can write down five things you're grateful for per day, you sleep better, you're more optimistic, you don't get sick as often. Your um, emotional health is very important. And keeping a grateful journal uh, or praying, that always helps mm -hmm. um, you st keep you well, particularly during this season when the flu hasn't started yet. I haven't heard of a lot of no. things happening, but just to keep ourselves well. Debbie, what happens after we fill out our little pie? Um, once you fill out the pie and bring it to the fitness center, we give you another one and we put your name on the list and then at the end of February we'll be drawing. We'll have a raffle. We'll have so a we're raffle. gonna draw we'll for, pull out. for some wonderful prizes okay. for you. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to mention to mention too that um, when it comes, I, I guess because we have a passion for fitness, of course, and we're there for a reason. If you can exercise, research shows that all of these areas will improve. Yes. You know, if you've read the book Spark from John Ratley, the Harvard professor, I've mentioned him before. Intellectually, after a 30 minute workout, you do better on cognitive tests. Right. So your brain is filled with oxygen so you can think better. You can make decisions. Uh, so many things improve. And then emotionally, of course, if we exercise aerobically for 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, then that elicits the, our own feel-good drugs, mm -hmm. serotonin and dopamine and uh, epinephrine and all these things that make you feel good. So that improves you emotionally, your mood improves, so then you feel more outgoing. Right. You're ready to go out and meet family and friends and you know enjoy the gatherings because if you're depressed, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. So that improves. And then again, we just talked about spiritually. If you believe in uh, the season, here and you believe in a higher being and uh, for a lot of us that are Christians it's you know the birth of Christ then you know you're optimistic about the future and I think for a lot of us you know there's a lot of negativity going on but it's it, spirituality could be anything that you believe anything that brings you out of yourself and focuses on something uh, much greater than you you know it's all about getting outside of ourselves here and um, of course, environmental, you know, the better you feel, the more apt you are to, to recycle. Yeah. Yeah, if you don't feel good, you're going, oh, what the heck? Yeah. What does this matter? Right. But if, when you're feeling good and exercise does that, then you're more apt to be caring of others, caring of your environment, a more upbeat, positive mood, 
that improves the environment around you. Right. So, and then vocational, I guess I didn't mention that. What is that, Deb? Um, vocational is the same thing as occupational. So it can be reading on something that you enjoy. Um, well, what else would you say? Well, I know a lot of you volunteer. Mm -hmm. there you so go. right now, your vocation is, it might have been general, <laughs> or it could have been, you know, an uh, admin secretary for a, you know, a, a, you know, company, but, but now, You've retired and you're sharing your gifts, whether it be teaching others or volunteering at, at uh, Echo or down here in our own little treasure chest. Mm -hmm. it, so much time and energy goes into um, keeping Green Spring the wonderful place it is. And now that's your vocation, you know, contributing to, to Green Spring, to your fellow residents and I think a lot of that too just in that line I see people who say well you know I don't have the energy or the physical ability to do that kind of thing and I guess my reaction is always you can always smile and speak to someone yes yeah and that I see it happening in the hallways sometimes when someone just kind of moping along you know mm -hmm. and someone will speak to them and it's just suddenly they kind of perk up mm -hmm. I agree with that and I think that in itself is something that we need to think about here. Oh, absolutely. You know, and you mentioned someone says, well, I'm, I'm, what can I do? You know, I'm in, a, I'm in a scooter. Well, I know for a fact that one of my favorite people, Millie, she uh, is in a scooter too, but she, she comes and teaches. Mm -hmm. she, she helps our, our, um, our employees that are trying to get their GED, mm -hmm. you know, to speak better English. So, I mean, there's... There's so many things you can do, you know, and like you said, to speak to someone, to go visiting in, in Garden Ridge. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, or your neighbors. That's right. If you haven't seen your neighbor, you know, in a day or so, it's time to knock on that door and make sure everything's okay. Or, sure. you know, that she's not feeling depressed because her family's not here or not around or their children can't visit this year. Mm -hmm. There's so much. Right. Like you said. Yep. What else, Deb? I don't know. I think you did a great job. <laughs> Do you have any questions? <laughs> well, we want you to know that each week you can make a new pie. Okay. You know, so the more you do, the more raffle tickets you get. And we've started it. It's already started. But December is so busy. We've only had a few people get started doing that. But actually, you know, this week you could all make your pie because you've got you're going to hit all these areas here sure. you know and even if you walk the halls a lot of people don't come into the fitness center but if you just walk the halls come on in grab yeah. one of these pies you don't have to be a fitness center member to do this right so we just want you to know it's open to everybody good and um, we'd love to get people that haven't um uh come into the fitness center come on in and talk to us about this and maybe we can talk you into coming on in <laughs> you know because we already know you'll feel better if you just get a sure. few minutes of exercise that's right and sure. you know I mentioned it was 30 minutes is like the magic number but research also shows 10 minutes morning 10 minutes noon 10 minutes night that's 30 minutes that's right so all your minutes count mm -hmm. nothing doesn't count here right so right. you know that's wonderful it is it is it is so everything's going well at the fitness center then? Yes, everything's going very well. Yeah, Good. we're moving right along. You know, one thing I should mention, Beb, maybe we should mention next week. Yes. Next week, there will be no classes. I know you've probably seen it on Channel 6 has been putting that on, but um, that's the only week, just one week a year that we don't teach a class. Okay. And so no water classes, no land classes. Okay. But the fitness center is open. 24 hours so if you're a fitness center member you know how to come on in and work out if you come in alone you know make sure you wear your pendant right and the pool will be open everything but Christmas uh, day and New Year's day. day those two times so the pool is open okay and I saw someone coming in late uh, last night and the pool is open till three, so they wanted a hot tub. It. Oh, until three. Till three morning. Monday through Friday. Oh, no, three afternoon. Afternoon. Okay. And four o'clock on the weekends. Okay. And if you have family here and you've got some grandkids, there is a time for you to swim. And on the weekend, it's two to four, and on weekdays, it's two to three. I, I believe. So. Well, one to two. I think it's one to two. Dang. I think it's one to two. One to two. One to two with okay. guests. With guests. Okay. Yeah. 
So bring the kids in, okay. you know, they'll have fun. We have lots of noodles and fun equipment they can play with. Good. Yeah, Good. and the lifeguard's always there. So you can come on in and if you, you know, you don't have to, I mean, you'll be watching clapping, but you don't have to rescue them if anything should happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We've got our lifeguard there. Right, right. Okay. Do you have any news about uh, the fitness center remake? You know, uh, we don't, although we do have, we will have coming in January, the rower is in, we've got a new rower, water rower, so we've just got to fill it up with water and all of the staff needs to get a little training on it, and that'll be open in the new year for you though. Okay. So yeah. that's one piece of new that's equipment. That's one piece of new equipment. And um, I know that Brad talked to our finance director, and um, hopefully we'll have a new treadmill in there soon, too. Mm -hmm. So Very good. Yeah. Very but we good. have no news about when are we going to get our yeah. new yeah. fitness center. Right, right. We just don't know. Yeah. Okay. Everyone always asks. I know. Oh, <laughs> yes. Everybody always. We're as anxious as you I are. I imagine you are. We are. We yeah. can't wait. It'll be fun. Yeah. That's great. Okay, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. We appreciate your information mm -hmm. and go get those pies and yes. get work on them. And if you have any questions, we're gonna have this right at our front desk so that we can you can open it up and read through it again and, and any of us can answer questions okay. about it. Okay. And, and it's all board. the information's on the bulletin board outside. So Okay. Definitely. Give us a call. We'd love for you to get started on making your own pie, uh, your fitness pie. Okay. Very good. Okay. So thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Let's see what kind of announcements we have today.